Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Thanks for being here. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at smart objects and talking about why, if you're a smart scientist, you'll choose to incorporate smart objects into your workflow. Now you might ask, what is a smart object exactly? Well, when you import any kind of image data or even a text layer into Photoshop and convert it into a smart object, what you're essentially doing is putting a protective shield around that layer. So if you were to add some sort of layer effect or filter or a mask, you're doing that manipulation to the protective shield rather than to the image itself. Um, now this is really handy because in science obviously we don't want to be going around and uh, manipulating our raw data, in, which in this case would be our image data. But it's also very practical because as a smart object it uh, lets you go and manipulate any sort of effects you've done, add or remove or change them uh, very easily, which you wouldn't be able to do if you were working with a raster image. So right off the bat, I'm just going to show you a couple ways that you might bring a smart object into your document. And so I find when I'm building a figure, uh, my typical workflow is just to work right out of the folder where I've got my original images. And I'll just click and drag them right into my document. And you'll see I get this bounding box here and the check, uh, well, and a little checkbox here, which I'm just going to click for now. But what I want to draw your attention to is you can see in my layer here, um, in my little preview window, I've got this page icon, which if I hover over it, it'll say Smart Object Thumbnail. So this little icon is indicating that uh, my image here is a smart object. And you'll also notice that if I have the paintbrush here, I get this little no sign, which says that I'm not able to paint on a smart, o smart object, which is uh, just something to keep in mind. And you might find frustrating if you've never really seen a smart object before. Not that I really know why you'd be going and painting on your image data, but who am I to judge? Um, a second way that you might end up bringing a smart object into your document, or another way that people might like to work, is if you were to go up and say File, Open, and open the file that you want to use. So let's double click it. And then say you want to incorporate it into your uh, figure composite. So you could do something like hit Control A to select all and copy uh, with Control C and then paste it into your document. And you'll notice here when I do that, I don't get the little page icon, which means this is not a smart object. And you can see again, if I were to do a little painting on it, it's perfectly fine. But again, probably not super useful for the purposes of our, f of our figure. So I'm just going to step back a few times. Now, if you did want to convert this into a smart object, all you need to do is right click your layer and say convert to smart object. And you can see this little page icon appears and you're off to the races. But I'm going to undo that for now because I want to show you a few other key differences between uh, smart objects and rasterized ob uh, images here. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you is resizing. So if I were, I'm just going to hide this guy for now. Now if I'm going to resize my smart object by hitting Control T, I'm just going to shrink it down to really, really tiny, just like that, and then I'll hit the check mark. And I'm going to do the same thing to this uh, raster image here by hitting Control T and shrinking him down to approximately the same size. So you'll notice um, when I shrink this guy down, I have a width of 7.4% and a height of, of about the same. I'll click the check mark. Um, and this one, if I hit Control T again, you can see I'm at about down around 1% or maybe around about 2%. I'm going to cancel out of that. Um, I'm going to go back and show you actually because the difference here. So you can see as a small image here, I was about as <laughs> at about 2% uh, in terms of my height and width. And when I shrunk down my other layer, it said originally 7%, but now that I've accepted those changes, it's reading as 100%, which is going to be a problem because now when I try to resize this image, uh, it's now saying I want to bring it up to 2500%. And it's pretty pixelated here. Um, and you can see that when I click the check, it gets a little bit better, but still pretty blurry and crappy. By comparison, if I want to bring uh, my smart object back up to size, it's still just at 1%, and when I bring it back up to, let's say, what I imported it as, which I think was around, well, it must have been around 46 or so, and I hit the check mark, you can see that it's still the same quality that I brought it in if I compare to the other layer. And so the point I'm trying to prove here is that with a smart object, it's always going to be relative to whatever... In, in resizing, it's always going to be relative to whatever your original image was. So even still, you can see I'm just at 46%, and I can even bring it up to 100%. And this is the original size of my uh, image. I'm just going to hit cancel there. Whereas with the rasterized image, any change that you make is going to be, oops, 
is going to be uh, to the original image. So I, if I were to shrink it down again, you can see I'll go to 8% and I hit the check. But all of a sudden now it's at 100%, so I'm going to be in even worse shape when I try to bring it back to full size. It's even crappier. So if anything, I think that's a great reason to work with smart objects. And so the other uh, aspect that I alluded to in the intro was that anytime you apply layer effects or uh, layer styles or uh, filters to your images, uh, you're going to be in much better shape if you use a smart object. So by way of example here, again, we've got this rasterize image. And say we wanted to put, I don't know, maybe just some more blur on it, because why not? So let's add a healthy dose at 63% or 63 pixels here. If we hit OK, and then that's it. That's that's kind of uh, locked in there. Um, and now if we were to do the same thing with the smart object, let's say filter, I'm just going to use the exact same um, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, we get the same blurry effect. But the great thing here is that you'll notice that it now it's listed uh, under the layer. And so now we can toggle it on and off if uh, we want it on or off. Um, and we can also click on these little setting icons to the uh, setting icon to the right here and we can reduce the opacity maybe if we want uh, and we can also play with the blend modes which I'm not really sure why you'd want to do this but it's nice to have the option I guess but I'm going to cancel out of that and if that's not enough you've even got this smart filter here so if you wanted to only apply blur to one or any kind of effect to one area of your image you could treat this like any other mask and just kind of mask away where you don't want your filter applied. And you're never going to be able to do that with a raster image. Um, similarly, if we were to use um, an adjustment to the image, um, which I should say, I think you can only do this in Photoshop CC. I'm not sure in earlier versions if you can apply image adjustments um, to smart objects. But I'll show you again, it's going to be kind of the same idea. Let's say we wanted to do uh, brightness contrast. So right now I'm on the raster layer. Let's crank the brightness up. Um, and again, that change is locked in. I can't uh, make any other changes to it unless I undo. But if I do the same thing now to the smart object, go up to brightness, let's crank it up to 150. Um, you'll see again that it's listed here. We can toggle it on and off. If we wanted to change it, we'll just double click it, bring it up again, and maybe crank the brightness down. And, uh, and there you have it. So I'm actually going to get rid of both of these because I don't want them. And actually, I might just throw them all in the garbage. And so the last thing I wanted to show you about smart objects is that uh, you can actually go into them and change them. And you can actually sort of inception smart objects. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say we, I don't know, just put some text here. Uh, figure one. And let's say for some reason we want to keep this and uh, these guys together and then we want to blur them all for some reason. I know it doesn't really make sense as an example. But what I want to show is that you can uh, turn multiple layers into a smart object. So if you just highlight the layers that you want, right click and say convert to smart object, you can see now that they're converted to one uh, layer here. And then we can go ahead and apply our loads of blur to both of them at the same time or whatever you want to do. Now what if you want to get in there and you don't like figure one you want to change it to figure two? Well the great news is all you need to do is just double click on the little smart object thumbnail here and it opens up a new sort of sub file and you're back to the original two files. So you can go in here and say I don't know let's change it to figure two and hit enter and so now if you're happy with that in fact let's even go one deeper I can actually double click this uh, smart object and you can see now we're back to our original image and if you want you can draw your little smiley face and uh, if you're happy with that change all you need to do is close the file and you'll get this little warning that says do you want to save changes before closing and you say yes and so now these changes are um, saved within the smart object and we'll do the same thing here save changes to the figure1.psb and we'll say yes and so now you can see these changes have been saved into our smart object and uh, if we want we can go back in and manipulate them some more if we so desire
this one I've kind of screwed up because I painted right onto my file, which I just started the video saying don't do that. But I think you get the idea. Um, yeah, sure, we'll save that. And so I think that pretty much does it for a really quick primer on smart objects. Um, yeah, hopefully that should be enough to get you started. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them below, and I will try my best to respond to them as quickly as possible. But for now, I guess I'll sign off by saying, you worked hard to get that data of yours, so uh, why not protect it as a smart object? And then, uh, then you won't have to do it again, I guess. Uh, all right, well, I guess that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching, friends, and I will see you all next time.